very stressful moment. You always had fear because of the war that was going on. At that time, the rebels had abducted people. There were many people living internally, displaced camps. So, um, and there was kind of very little information coming from that side about the facts, what was really going on in the region. Yeah. And um, the owners, the founders of Bosco Uganda, there is a priest called Father Joseph Okumu and a friend uh, from the USA called Gus. Um, they had the idea of establishing ICT centers within the camp, mm -hmm. the, within the internal displaced people's camps, yeah. um, with the idea of connecting, you know, the camps with the world, so that the people in the region um, are able to express themselves uh, and tell their own stories, and uh, also get to connect with the outside world, so yeah. that people get to see what is happening. And uh, if you remember very well, the Archbishop, uh, who is still the one, Archbishop um, Odama. Um, that time children would sleep on the streets because it was not safe yeah. and um, you remember the time when he joined them to sleep on the streets very young children as old as three years yeah. four years yeah. had to leave their homes to come and sleep on the streets. so there was need to sh uh, share information about what is going on in the region and also it was established in a way to enable people enable people speak out about you know their lives so that people get to understand really the situation in the context so um bosco was established to kind of connect people mm -hmm. from one camp to another so the first uh, connection was in pabo camp and then um we thought of establishing additional camps you know like additional sites in in other camps so using a voice over telephony system mm -hmm. and also i could say that bosco uh, and the the, the founders mm -hmm. were really visionary in yeah. a way that they started having wireless network connection already in the camps, you know, that early. So what we are today is um, an organization that has now established about 54 ICT centers. These are information communication technology centers yeah. uh, in communities, in the rural communities, basically to connect the unconnected um, and the digital isolation and enable people, you know, using the internet to reach out to the world, access information, and Bosco does not only do uh, connection in the uh, um, in the communities, yes. but also the organization supports other you know NGOs, other organizations, and the archdiocese, the institution of the archdiocese with connectivity, mm. and it is a not for profit organization, it's a private not for profit organization. So we don't do it for profit at all, mm. but it is about the community and about uh, extending services to the places where. You find uh, the main companies like the MTN and others are not reaching yeah. because the northern region, as you know, um, because of the war, fell behind on many development indicators. Yeah. So access, even roads, are not very easy. So you find Bosco Uganda um, and its network, the wireless network, up to Pabo. You find it in uh, uh, Gago district. You find in really all the Acholi sub uh, districts yeah. um, and also in Lango. And, uh, We've also established some ICT centers in the West Nile. Okay. Um, it expanded from connecting people towards also building skills of people, like uh, basic skills on computer, so that people are able to use it you know, wow. and work. Wow. And um, recently we did some interesting work mm -hmm. um, with Lacho Hospital, trained a number of uh, health workers, mm -hmm. uh, tutors, mm -hmm. and today, as you know, with COVID, more than ever digitalization is highly appreciated yeah. it's the way to go and uh, bosco continues to give people skills um, on basic computer and also connect them so that they're able to you know reach out the world and do their work wow jennifer what a beautiful story right there i want to take you back a little bit from a personal point of view you've talked about bosco now we understand that it's not the bosco the no. catala of the city <laughs> <laughs> but it's really the bosco the catala of the village yeah. or of the community yeah. that's that's the most important thing about it i want to take you back to a more personal question who is jennifer Okusia. a simple lady <laughs> Yeah. Humble lady. I am uh, a Ugandan yeah. and I'm from Moyo district. My dad is from Moyo and my mother was from Arua, so she was a Lubara. I'm a Madi. Um, I, how do I say, I'm 41 years old. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I look so young but I'm 41 years old. Yeah. And um, I studied uh, in Makere University. I started from uh, studying in Arua. Arua was my school time, uh, primary school in Arua, 
a Rural Hill Primary School, which yeah. now is hosting, I think they are setting up a football pitch there. Yeah. Um, and then I started Muni Girls Secondary School, a uh, wonderful school. And then I came to Makere University. Yeah. So all my my life I've been living up in the north in West Nile in Arua. And I studied Development Studies, uh, Bachelor's in Development Studies from Makere University. Then after a few years, I did my postgraduate in business uh, management. And yeah. then I did a master's with uh, Uganda Matters University in, in uh, development studies as well. Wow. So I'm a woman who, I will say I'm a development worker. Yes. Um, very passionate about uh, social development yeah. and um, transformation of lives. Wow. Yeah. Um, Jennifer, you are nominated to come onto the CEO bench. The program that you're on right now is called the CEO bench. The CEO bench exists mm -hmm. to, you know, spotlight people who are on a good leadership journey leadership journey from self-leadership to community leadership to national leadership and to you know infinity leadership if that exists which we know it does yeah. but um the people who nominated you seems to have to believe that you're doing something good and so whenever we have nomination to bring people to the ceo bench we're looking at their leadership abilities. We're looking at their level of change management. How do they manage change from one place to the next? Mm -hmm. Because you're growing into ladder and it's your bench, you know, shine lights on people who are on the top. And those who are either on the top coming down or those who are going to the top. You've recently been appointed as uh, the new executive director of Bosco Uganda. Mm -hmm. And I guess that is the reason why they spotlight on you at the moment. And on the CEO bench, we want to know from you. We've asked you the question with Jennifer, and what is your story like as a person growing up as a girl child from Arua or from Moyo? I mean, did you ever see yourself where you are today? What was the story like? Um, as I said before, I, I, I came from a humble family, yeah. um, a family of uh, five people, five yeah. children, um, a father and a mother recently passed on. Uh, may God rest their soul in eternal peace. Yeah. Um, but I grew up like many other young girls in, in this country who are from the countryside, um, not very advantaged of life. Um, my mother was an ophthalmologist and actually she's a mentor to me because she's one of the first people to come in a rural district in the 1990s yeah. to kind of give awareness about eyes about mm -hmm. the eye you know the cataracts and mm -hmm. she was able to you know operate people's eyes and were able to see so my mother was passionate about work and some of the values i draw today are from my mother yeah she was for me such a model because um she really somehow kind of single-handed raised us although i had a father he was uh i uh, call him um an electrical engineer yeah and um he he kind of retired early. So in the early 94, my dad, yes. for some reason, decided to get a retrenchment. So yeah. he left the burden of care to my mother. So my mother was raising nearly five children on her own. Yeah. Uh, I am the third, third born in the family. Yeah. I had a stepbrother, he's passed on. My elder sister is in police keeping mission now. Myself and then two siblings, yeah. a boy and a girl, and then we had a cousin that was with me. But what I'm telling this story because uh, as a mother, women, I'm, I'm relating so much to women yeah. and what they go through, um, families, what they go through. Yeah. So I had a mother who was doing everything she could do to raise nearly the children alone, although yeah. the husband was there. Yeah. It was hard for us uh, because I experienced also hardship, poverty, and I know what it means. Yeah. And one of them, I remember in the university, we had a course called yeah. Poverty and Development. <laughs> I didn't have to study it. I'm like, you know what? Poverty you are the course itself. I'm like, yeah. I, I am the course itself. So this one, no, no need to study. Yes, so yes, I had yes. to pass it very highly because yes, I understood. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it was a tough life because, yeah. you know, civil service work, um, the payments, and yeah. it was hard to pay school fees for many children. So, yeah. well, in short, um, I had to stand out as a leader already as a child. Yeah. I was helping my mother in running her clinic that she was using to get some income. So when she's in the hospital, I would take care of uh, the clinic and be like a nurse. <laughs> so I started that actually yes, by yes. primary school yes. and went on to secondary. But yeah. when I reached senior six, I said, no, this yeah. is legal. I can't do this. So yeah. um, it's a profession and you've got to become a nurse yeah. you know, or a doctor. And I had to leave it. Uh, but 
that in short, I, we had challenges as far as school fees is concerned. Uh, you know, a single parent really, I would say, um, not very easy to raise it. So, yeah. you know, when you're in school those days, you yeah. carry yourself yes. as a lady, even yeah. on a bicycle. Yeah. You carry yourself to school, <laughs> fall on the, on the way as you go yes. with your yes. luggage, yes. but you come back. Yeah. And so it was a struggle with school fees for us. But one thing that made me think already at that time, uh, I was a leader in, in, in various settings. I was an active uh, leader in the youth uh, yeah. category, I would say. We had what they call the young Christian students. Yeah. I was a leader right from uh, secondary school, mm -hmm. and I was the head of the section in, this, in the school, even at the district, I was a, a publicity secretary. And I, eventually when I came to Makere, I was the vice national leader. So in this YCS, I'm saying it because there were so much values that we drew from yes. uh, being- There's leadership, there's leadership you can instilled see in you. Yeah. yeah, so we had, so much values. Then we were really like, you know, you had to be, we had themes like uh, models for change. Yes. A leader is, yes. you know, you have to go to be, be a model yes. for change. Yes. You know, you, there were so many values. So what we did yeah. was that even in school, you had to identify where are the problems and kind of as students try to resolve the problems within the school and outside. Wow. But I was also an UNSA chairperson in the school and also in the district, I was also a leader. Yeah. And so these things helped me a lot. Yeah. And uh, one thing that I knew that I said, in our family, you know, we, we were born on the other side, not yeah. very privileged yes. like others, but you needed to work hard to yeah. be better. I knew that to be successful, yeah. you've got to work hard. Yeah. And as a woman, I never believed in getting handouts for men yeah. or, you know, having a boyfriend or something as a short, you know, as a way of meeting your basic needs. Yeah. It is very costly. Yeah. So the only way out was education. And yeah. I really did believe and up to today, I value so much education that no matter what, education is the way out. Yeah. And uh, I knew that um, if I succeed, yeah. my siblings will not have to suffer. They they had to get education. And that's what I did. As soon wow. as I finished the university and got my first volunteer job as a lecturer, you know, <laughs> um, yes. I, I was never afraid of challenges because yes. Yes. you had to face challenges and yeah. deal with them. Yeah. So it built me up. I kind of became very strong and there's nothing that I would be afraid of. And something that I drew from my early childhood, the motto of the schools, like yeah. the primary school. Yeah. In Arohi, it was saying, I will try, come yeah. what may. Yes. <laughs> and then, no, it yes. was hard work pays, actually. Yes. Then yes. in Muni Girls, it was, I will try, come what may. Yeah. So there's nothing that can defeat you. So you pick up yourself and yeah. move. So for girls, I really do believe that even today, when you look at the context we are with COVID and we hear so many cases of girls getting pregnant, yeah. I really want to speak to them that, you know, um, Challenges are there in life, yeah. but you never give up. Yeah. It's you've got to fight on and really believe in God. But then what keeps us moving is that faith in God. Yeah. When you have God in your heart and you really, really believe in the values that come from, you know, from your faith, yeah. it can move you to mountains. It can wow. move mountains from your life, actually. Yes. You can actually overcome so much yeah. and be what you want to be. Wow. So I was a leader, yes. uh, I would say by default or whatever, but I was always in leadership. Yeah. And I believe that... For every problem, there is a solution. Yeah. And there's no problem that is permanent. You can always overcome it. Wow. Well, we are talking to Jennifer Okusia Erejo. We are yet to know the names that sounds from the eastern part of Uganda, but yet she's uh, talking of the West Nile part of the country. Of, of course, the West Nile part of Uganda is a part of the country from the northern part of Uganda. If you're watching the show from anywhere across the world, it's a CEO bench. My name is Eddie Okela. Jennifer Okusia Erejo is the new executive director of Bosco Uganda, an organization based out of the northern part of Uganda. 14 years of doing community work around and she has been promoted to the executive director spot and therefore the vote came to us to have her on the show. You've just had the first part of the interview with Jennifer where we're talking about who is Jennifer, what are you, you know, growing up, what did you want to be? What was it like? We're going to take a break. And when we come back, Jennifer and I will dive more into what excites her as we move towards the discussion about her role as a woman leader. Not just a woman leader, taking over from uh, a sport that is usually men and moreover in a Catholic church. What a story right there. Sarah, right I'll be right back after the break. Welcome back. 
back. It is the CEO bench. My name is Eddie Okela, and of course, my guest this morning is Isaac Mwisigwa, the CEO of Express FC, a national football club in Uganda, and of course, the champions of the Sekafa and uh, you know the local Premier League of Uganda. Isaac is on the program today. We're discussing the rise of a new CEO to the top. Voted with 56 votes. You know leading as many people as possible the ceo bench is about voting if you do not have vote we can't bring you to the show we want to have people participate in the voting isaac and welcome back to the program thank you so that when we bring you to the program we have people who have nominated you um this program you're on today and of course house of talent is viewed and followed by over 1.8 million ugandans who live across the world in diaspora and Thank you. it is a place where they find solace to find to, rather to find so many things that happen in Uganda that normally necessarily they don't find anywhere else. And we're happy that we have them. A lot of people who nominated you are Ugandans living in Australia, in Sweden, in Denmark, uh, some who live in the UK. We've got some people as far as uh, living in the US who are nominating you. Says, can you bring this guy on the show? But locally here. Even inside House of Talent, we've got so many people advocating for you who are fans of Express FC. Thank and you. they say, the CEO is just across. Why don't we bring the CEO? And here we are on the show today. We want to go to the last lap of the show, which is the transformation, but also the lessons that we can pick from you. You've had the question before we went for a break. But I want to read another question so you can answer them together. I have a question coming in here from, in fact, a comment coming from Marciko Emmanuel. He's saying, how can a polite Express fan like me position myself to replace you as the CEO of Express FC. <laughs> <laughs> Emma from Kira Bulindo is asking you how can he who is a polite person position himself I think he's very passionate about Express FC. Perhaps you need to monitor this man because he's a fan who wants to replace you as a CEO. <laughs> well, uh, Masiko Emmanuel is saying, I'll read this again, Masiko, because I find this question very interesting for Isaac. How can a polite Express fan like me position myself to replace you as the CEO for Express FC Emma from Kira Bulindo? I'll read another one coming from Miro Ayub. Uh, he says that um, CEO Twebalize Abakuru Okay. Yes, basically thank you. saying thank you so much. Are you be saying Miro, thank you very much that uh, is thanking Isaac for the good job they are doing at F as uh, Express FC. And uh, of course this is in the one DXD. I think that must be his uh, name, yeah. uh, fun name for Express FC. So, thank you very much. Keep your kisses and this is coming. I want to read a comment coming here from a fan who is all the way in Sweden. Ed Yukila, thank you very much for the program. Uh, Isaac, thank you very much. I'm a fan of KCCA Football Club and I support KCCA with everything in me. But I was happy when Express FC won because... It shows that not only my club is uh, is rising to the top. Of course, X KCC will always be the top. <laughs> <laughs> but I was happy that Express won the cup for the first time after so many years because it shows that professionalism is beginning to take over in our clubs in Uganda. Uh, I like uh, that CEO and what he's saying. Uh, of course, for us at KCCA Football Club, uh, we've, we've started this, we've been leading this, and I think that if we have more clubs going to the regional tournaments, like my club, shout out to Agri Ashaba for making this happen, and of course to Isaac for you know following the footsteps. If we have many clubs going, it would be okay. But my question to this CEO of Express FC is one. He's talked about money and he's talked about, you know, sponsorship not coming to the Federation. The biggest problems we have seen from my club going forward, one, organize the club to be able to attract money, which we have done in KCC. One of the learnings I have from there, and Isaac has echoed it again, is the fact that corporate companies cannot trust football clubs in Uganda because the football clubs in Uganda, the way they are set up, has too many baseless structures down there. Those who founded the club in 1900 trying to control the club and those who are coming up to join the club, to put money in the club, wants to control it. There's always pulling ropes. I can imagine what is going on with the success at Express FC. I'm sure that gentleman is not sleeping as a, as, <laughs> as, as, a, as a CEO. Isaac, how are you managing the pressure of those who 
se eno club yafe si yo sebo tokena ku changing ebintu byo na biri mu eno club to fit you if you found us here if you can't like it we won't allow you to take the club forward with the fact that you have to take the club and make it professional luckily for you you have chiriwa kiwanuka there who has been part of that club for a very long time but is now the attorney general aren't you going to collapse as soon as you have risen <laughs> Isaac, well everyone seems to be thinking that uh, kiriwa is going to becoming a you know uh yeah uh, attorney general is a problem for express yes david Again, I told you, yeah. people have to sep must separate Chirwa Chiwanuka, the Attorney General, yes. and, and the Chirwa, chairman. <laughs> Chirwa Chiwanuka, the Chairman, yes. and, and, and a fan of Express. Yes. These are two different people. Yes. <laughs> Are you sure, Isaac? We had in the Bobby Wine situation where there was a. <laughs> I, I mean, one the politician and then the policeman said that what? He said that um, there was a bad man from Kamocha. Those are two different people. Yes. No, no, but you see, yeah. the Attorney General is also a human being. Yes. The, the Attorney General also likes entertainment yes. and expresses his entertainment. Yeah. So he's around, at, at least from. He, he has assured me on, on yeah. this forum that. Um, yeah. He's, um, he's available. Yeah. Um, a number of questions or comments. Um, I'll also, if I remember properly, I'm not here with my team to make com a, a complete change um, or transform the club. Yeah. Um, at least we're going to we, we'll, we'll leave the norms of the club yeah. to, uh, intact. The still play at one crew. Who is still put on the same uh, colors? But we are here to make sure that the club is run professionally, to bring back the glory days. And I'm sure if you are a real Express fan, that's what you want. Yeah. How we get it, how we get to, to that level, is what we now need to agree on. Yeah. It may not please everybody, but will please the majority. Um, Mr. Masiko talked about how he can position himself yes. uh, to replace me. Yes. First of all, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't have the <laughs> appointing, I'm not the appointing authority, yes, yes. but um, he should be known by his works. Yeah. He lives in a, a particular area. He could do something for Express. Yeah. That way, um, leadership, Express leadership will notice that there's an able Masiko somewhere. Um, that that has leadership uh, credentials mm. some of the things he can do for for express today is to start an, an, an express fans wing uh, he becomes the leader of a particular area then that way he, he'll have he'll, he'll have gotten into the the express fence yeah. you know you you need to position yourself while, when you are within if you're within yeah there was also another comment of um Brands not not um, having confidence in clubs in this country, yes. and then also clubs not having structures. Mm -hmm. I would like to commend the federation, uh, FUFA, mm -hmm. uh, with their pro agenda. The pro agenda teaches um, clubs or club CEOs or club administrators mm -hmm. to have autonomy, to have decision-making power yeah uh, it's now a requirement that uh, club ceos have can take decisions on behalf of the presidents before you'd have a president who is sinking in money and the president wants to to select the first 11 to play yet these people are very busy they are not on the ground yeah. but the club pro agenda um initiated by the federation um this is fofa this is fofa mm. um requires the the, the club ceo has the mandate to run a football club. Okay. The club pro agenda mandates clubs to have basic structures. You must have a secretariat, you must have an office, you have a, must have a, a playing field, you must have a training ground, you must have basic things. Yeah. That way, they're trying to help clubs get organized. Okay. That, that, that is the only way you can, you can have a license to play in the Ghana Premier League. So, Again, we need to work together to attract, to attract this money coming from these, these other companies. Yeah. Somebody talked about um, KCC and winning and things like that. Yes, KCC has been winning because um, 
they are an institution uh, from the KCCA and they are mandated to be organized yeah. um, because they need to account for the finances given to them. Yeah. The biggest problem has been with the clubs owned by individuals. It has been a bit difficult to convince these individuals to, 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 to implement certain um, structures. But I'm happy with uh, my chairman, uh, Attorney General Honorable Chiriwa Chuanuka, who, who, who believed in me and took a risk to accept um, my, um, my proposals to, to set up structures that express. And here we are, we, there's, there's success. Uh, lastly, if I remember correctly, um, somebody was talking of um, winning and having a lot of pressure and Yes, balancing the board between the club owners, original club owners, who traditional club owners, those who started them, yeah, you know, and um, those who have come in and joined along, they will put the money. Yeah, there is emotional attachment to those who have started this club. Eddie Okela started this club. Isaac has started this club, and with my friends, and we played in this club. We always want to hold on to this club, not letting it go to become professional. So when a CEO comes, according to him there are always going to be a clash. And whenever you win, and a certain amount of money comes in, like Betway comes in to give you the money, it's always a fight because they want to get the reward of having started a club from the very beginning, and they want to be able to account for that money themselves. It's always a problem. So he's saying, how are you managing that right now? Success comes with challenges. How are you managing that? Well, challenges will always be there. And... As a human being, if you want to, to succeed, mm -hmm. you need to embrace challenges. Yeah. Now, uh, if you have structures and you have policies and procedures, policies and, pro policies and procedures will kick su such greedy and selfish people out. Yeah. Take an example. When Betway gets us uh, funds for sponsorship, that money does not get onto an individual account. It goes to a company account, yeah. to an express sports club account. Yeah. And I'm not, a sing I'm not a single signatory. There are a number of people. So there's no way an individual is going to take a decision and say, I need that money. Mm -hmm. So the structures will sort some, some of those people out. Mm -hmm. Then some of those emotional challenges or political challenges are not my battles to fight. Um, and luckily enough, those people fighting deep inside themselves, they want Express to succeed. And that's what we're doing. So the solution is to succeed. If they love Express, they'll sit back and enjoy the moment. If they love Express, they'll be happy that Express is winning. But going forward, we need to work together. We need to bring all the parties together to make sure that we, we have a common goal, and that is express. Because I, it's, it's not by mistake that this club has been in existence since 1957, yeah. and is still going. Yeah. Believe me, there have been fights, and the fights will always be there. But how you manage them is to have things run professionally, and that's what we are trying to do. Wow. Isaac, um, we are hastening to the close of the show. Before we ask you the next question, and I want to just read this to you, and to everyone coming to the program, you know, the CEO bench is about transformational leadership approach to things. The ability that often defines a leader's level of effectiveness is what we're talking about in this show, and that's the reason why Isaac is on this show. But also, we talked about change management, which is the management of change and development within self as a person moving from one place, IT, to the next, to being a CEO of Express, is what we're talking about here. A business or a similar organization or a nation, you have to go through these processes to be somewhere. That's what the CEO bench is all about, and that's why Isaac is here. And the third thing we looked at is the control identification of, you know, and implementations of the required changes that that person is going through, all right? With himself as a person, what is the required control identification of Isaac Mwesigwa as the CEO of Express FC? You know, moving from one place to the next, we want to know that. And if it's business, we also want to know that. Or in a similar organization, you can't go to lead a nation when you have not led somebody. There's a big problem, Isaac, where we think that we can just fall from the roof and you go and start standing to become a president in Uganda. No, you must have gone through certain ranks and we must have seen you. And that's what this program is about. 
whenever we see CEOs and people rising to position, we want to be able to give them opportunity and a platform for them to account for their roles and responsibilities given to them or trust given to them by people to lead. In your case, you are given trust by the board of Express FC. We want you to account publicly to the board of Express FC, but as well as to the funds of Express FC. But we also need some people to be able to, you know, affirm that what you're doing is actually true. We can see the implementation of changes of Express FC or in Express FC, uh, you know, to, you know, a place where we're looking at justifiable, quantifiable, measurable metrics of impact of your leadership in that place. And towards the end of this show, we're going to ask you a question about what's next for Isaac. But uh, we're looking at what's next for a leader when you are going, when you leave Express FC, where do you end up? Where are you going? What are your plans? How do you leave Express FC? Because a lot of people, when they make, get success or get into position of leadership, they often leave that place dying when they're moving. They always leave the place dying. So if you leave Express FC with the glory and then the moment you move, they go on their knees. We will know that Isaac was not a very good leader. And those are the miserable metrics that we're looking for to measure the impact of Isaac and the leadership and the team that you lead in that place. Uh, Emmanuel asked a very interesting question. Emmanuel, I think that there should be a mentorship program where the CEO of Express, perhaps you could implement this, begin to pick some of those people and you mentor them, personally mentor them, because those will be a good platform for leadership change at Express, at the CEO level, that could be the CEO initiative that you leave at Express FC, meet up with Emmanuel, start to mentor Emmanuel, spend time with Emmanuel, have a week where Emmanuel come to understand as a fan of Express FC, to understand what the role of the CEO is at the club. He's a fan, he doesn't know what happened in the background here. Perhaps he will come and just run away from knowing that the responsibility <laughs> and the things that the CEO is doing is quite much. But I have a question here for you also, Isaac, as we close. You will, uh, you know, wrap up all of this. Uh, somebody has said, Eddie O'Killer, thank you very much for, you know, bringing Isaac to the show. I think uh, many, many people have enjoyed this program. But he says, I want you to ask Isaac one thing. Uh, he, people seems to be going back to the professional running of football clubs in Uganda. Isaac seems to be the only CEO that is empowered, and we know why. That he <laughs> must have been fighting with Chiriwa Kiwanuka, the chairperson, and many people in that board to give him the trust. Most football CEOs or most sports management CEOs in Uganda, particularly in football and sports, are not empowered. That's what the person is. I love that Isaac is talking. I love that this program is mixing and bringing as many people as possible. I think this for me has been the best program so far, uh, you know, in recent times, seeing a variety of people in leadership coming to this program. But Express FC seemingly look like they are the only club with a CEO that is empowered to deliver and to make changes. Most CEOs are not. And I want to say this as a fact. I'm a Villa fan. I don't feel like our CEO is empowered to do what he wants to do. He speaks very found outside, down there. But within the club, I don't seem to see it. And I'm a passionate fan of Villa. I want to know this. And from Isaac, how can we help different clubs to empower? learning from what is going on at Express to empower. The only club with an empowered CEO is KCC, and we know because on an institution, an institution, it means that people at City Hall seems to have a good say and giving a good power force to the CEO to continue moving. But otherwise, in summary for me, most sporting clubs in the country called Uganda in many, and, and in many other neighboring countries are not empowered as CEOs. The real meaning of CEO is chief executive officer it means that he has many other executive below him and is the chief but they are not empowered that's the reason why football and sports in the country is not moving isaac what are the learnings from your place that you can share with us and we can take on and we can help our ceos to become much better that's a fan coming from not very far away from the way he's watching from bulindo <laughs> a suburb of kampala and his name is Moses Matsiko. Hey, that's there that's you a go. good one, Matsiko. Um, yes. The, the issue of empowerment um, has been a contentious one. Yeah. First of all, um, it's not easy to, to trust your business 
with an individual yeah. if you don't um, you don't if you don't have confidence in that person. Yeah. At the same time, that person has to show. A, that person has to be transparent enough. Yeah. So this goes comes back to us um, leaders of these clubs. Mm -hmm. You need to sit with your, your the club presidents or the club owners and have a plan. If they buy into your plan, mm -hmm. then they will trust you. Then you also need to show, or you need to show cause. They, they, they need to buy into your ideas mm -hmm. and then be able to believe you. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I don't think it was easy for my chairman to trust me from day one. Mm -hmm. But as time went by, he noticed that uh, he had the right person in, the, in, in that office. Mm -hmm. And today, I have his full trust. Mm -hmm. So again, this comes back to us. We need to be known by our works you need to have a reputation you need to have um uh you need to to be able to be believed even when you're not there you need to account you need to be able to account for even the little things you need to be able to communicate properly so that these um these club presidents can start trusting us um with decision making we are, we are, as again, as I told you, uh, we are being helped with, by the FUFA Pro agenda to, to, to make sure that uh, club CEOs trust us. But at the same time, a president cannot invest a, a lot of money and then sit back and just watch you spend their money. They, you need to spend their money um, the right way. It's an issue, and it has, it's an issue that is um, causing a lot of um, slow decision making. But we will get there. It's just a matter of time. I believe that um, my my our son Villa, if they make if they put their house in order, um, put structures together, Sean will be empowered. I I I, I believe I believe um, Sean is a very good um, is a very good CEO. Um, you talked of uh, mentoring a few people so that in case. Um, like Emmanuel Matiko. Yes. Wants to um, be. <laughs> when. Yes. Express Secretariat is open to uh, passionate uh, administrators or individuals who would like to learn uh, the trade. And if the right time, when I approach the time and, and I know I'm about to leave, um, I'll inform my board and we'll start, we'll start the transition. I believe um, I'll leave Express at the time... Um, at the right time, when I have the, I have somebody, I'll I'll recommend to the board to replace me, so that um, there's continuity. It is very important. I don't. I, I would feel bad that um, as soon as I leave, the club um, goes down to where they were. That is not our um, our intention, and it will not happen. So, um, and and this is a call to my fellow CEOs in different clubs. Um, we need to work together. We need to learn from each other. Um, we are not saints. We need... There are things I know that they don't know. There are things they know that I do not know. But the more we work together, the more we improve our different clubs. And we make our game more interesting and, make, and, and attract more brands and make more money. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we are talking to Isaac and this has been a CEO bench. And we are definitely going to ask you, Isaac, the last question. Uh, you know, uh, you know, where do we see you life after Express FC? Where do we see you five, ten years from now? Will you become the CEO of uh, an IT firm in Uganda, or will you, you know, go to Manchester United, Tottenham? Where would you end up? You know. Well, um, after Express, uh, I believe um, I'll still remain in sport. Um, in the next five years, I'll still be in sport, maybe at uh, at the member association, maybe at the federation, or at a bigger at a bigger club uh, uh, somewhere in the world. But I don't intend to leave sport. Um, at the same time, I I still do IT work. Uh, the, the day has twenty four hours, so I I manage my time very well, yeah. and. Yes, in five years, five, ten years, I'll still be in sport and I'll be a winner somewhere. I believe um, 
I keep telling my people at the secretary that I'm, for me, I'm a go-getter. If I want to do something, I'll do it. Okay. And um, lastly, um, I would like to thank our fans who have supported us this far. We had also fans who came to Tanzania for the Sakafa. Um, our fans, um, we like to thank you for the support this far. We'd like to thank you and would like to encourage you to register. The club uh, needs the finances. Um, you know, winning is winning is not easy, but maintaining the the standard is very very difficult. Um, we 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 are looking for funds. Uh, our merchandise is coming in a month's time. We urge you to register, buy our replica kit, which is coming in very very soon. I would like to thank our sponsors: Betway, MSL, Buganda Land Board, and Special. And lastly, I would like to thank. Our Chairman, Honorable um, Attorney General Chiriwachiwanuka for the support, uh, together with the board uh, for the support and guidance. And we ask you to keep doing what you've been doing for us. And we know that uh, we will not disappoint you. Um, we, for the last one week, we've had a few issues. Um, sportingly, we were eliminated from uh, the Champions League. We were eliminated from the Uganda Cup yesterday. Um, we knew that uh, we will not win everything because we are not immortals. We are. Um, we, we also needed to, you know, to to get back to right and know that um, it's, it's, it's not always a win-win, but also we can win some and lose some. But we believe that uh, we've done a good job. We also believe we can do better going forward, and um, we are looking forward to the new season. Thank you very much, and. Um, as we say, Mukwano um, Gwabanji, we hope that um, we keep this club to where, to where it is today. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Isaac, for those you know, you know, encouraging words to your people and to your clubs. Uh, by the way, when you won in Tanzania, you know, that was your biggest cup, Sekafa. What was the party like? Did your chairman jump, walk on his head? What, what was going on? Uh, the chairman yes, was <laughs> the chairman was very excited. Uh, um, I, had, I, had, yes. I had not had. Um, what happened in the board? <laughs> we want to know. Yes, um, first yes, of all, yes. the, some of the board members yes. flew in to watch the game. Okay. The chairman could not fly in because of the schedule, but I was on call from the semi final stage. He would call me all the time. Do you need anything? We are happy. He was very excited. I had never had a chairman CEO conversation this long with him. <laughs> um, Yes. It was the first time, yes. and uh, everybody, everybody that is um, connected to Express was really, really happy. I mean, I mean, we beat Yanga in the semi-final. Then we beat uh, Nyasabules from Malawi, the champions of Malawi, and uh, everybody was really, really excited. My family was very excited. I, uh, my family is always complaining that I don't talk about them. My family was very happy. They were excited. <laughs> um, yes. I'm sure most of them are watching this yes. show right now. Yes. Um, the families of my staff. This is this for me is very exciting. The families of my staff yes. are always following Express because their their children are working for Express. Wow. Um, and many other people. It it was winning the Sekafa. Yes. Um, kind of kind of cemented the kind of transformation yeah. Express has had yeah. in the recent times. And we, we have a Sekafa. At the time I look at that trophy, I, 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 I keep telling my people, well done. Yes. And I'm sure the chairman, wherever he is, uh, I'm sure he's busy, but he will watch this show. I'm sure he's happy that we have a Sekafa in our bag. We have the Premier League in, in our bag. Yeah. In his third year, by the way. This is his last year. But I know he, he's around, but uh, he had a plan from uh, 20, 2018 to 2021. And... 2021, he has won all this. I'm sure he's very happy. Oh, for the first time, and we believe um, it's, it's not the last time. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, uh, you know, all of you guys for tuning into and watching the CEO bench today. And to everyone all across the world, we would like to say thank you very much. I would like to end this with, uh, you know, a message coming from Busingi Godfrey. Say, it's been a great season. Cheers to Isaac and his team.
and in his entire team. Thank you very much, guys, at Express FC. And we'd like to say thank you very much to everybody from all across the world for being part of the CEO bench, growing bigger and better. Please nominate the next CEO you would like to see here. The nomination to bring the CEO bench is very simple. Go onto our page, type, nominate, send it to us. We will bring them. And of course, you know, follow us on Facebook at House of Talent Uganda and you always catch this interview there. It's there 24 hours. And of course, on our website, www.houseoftalentug.com, you will be amazed what you'll find there. And of course, on Twitter, please keep tweeting. Always send kisses and this is there. If you don't like the show, kiss us. If you like the show, this us. We are okay. Isaac, we're going to bring this to an end. Like they say, every good Thank thing has come to an end. Until next time, the CEO Bench has come to an end. God bless and stay focused. It is the House of Talent Television. Edio Killer, Isaac Musigwa, signing out.